much. So let's take you uh, now to Victoria, where a protest is taking place outside TfL's headquarters this lunchtime by the families of black cab drivers. They say they want more to be done to regulate online firms like Uber and Halo. Jessica King is looking after this one for us. Jessica. Well, this really is a family affair, Anthony. It's partners, husbands, wives, and children of black cab, black cab drivers who have come down here today um, to stand up for what they say is TfL's woeful failure in regulating uh, private hire firms across the capital. Um, they say that they're not being supported against the unfair competition um, of private hire firms like Uber, like Halo, but there are a number um, in the capital. Um, so there are over 600 people going to be joining this demo today. I'm joined uh, by two of the ladies from the campaign today, um, Amanda and Deb. Thank you for coming on. Now, Amanda, why are you down here today for Save Our Black Taxis? Basically, we're families, friends of the black taxi drivers. My husband's a black taxi driver. Um, the TfL basically are not enforcing regulations on anyone else other than the black taxi drivers. Um, you know, their lives are becoming more and more difficult. Um, the, the rules are just not being enforced, basically, and we need TfL to listen to us as families and friends and the taxi drivers, you know, to do their job properly. Well, the mayor and TfL, I mean, they say that they are pressing for legislation to regulate this more. They're going to have more taxi ranks in the capital. They are reviewing the regulations. Um, are you still unhappy? Yeah, we're still unhappy because it's a bit li too little too late. Um, this has been going on for a long time. Um, they're just letting so many public hire vehicles come into London. Um, they're pushing our trade out. We've got people that are not being CRB checked. They're not, um, they can be in the country for a matter of weeks and get a licence. And these, not these black cabs have had to do the knowledge for four years. They'll be, they have to be regular CRB checked. And they've got a lot of overheads. And they're just being pushed out of the black cab trade because anybody can pick up anywhere. Do you feel like actually in time the black cab trade could actually become extinct altogether in London? I think the black cabs feel like that, don't you? I think they do and I think that's what um, Boris Johnson and TfL are actually aiming for to out the black cabs. The public want a cheaper vehicle but you know you need to put safety before the pound note. Um, there's nothing really much more you can say about that because if they're not enforcing the regulations, anyone could be driving your family and friends about. Now you're ten women who've joined together to, to really um, pick up this campaign. How has it affected your lives as families and friends of black cab drivers? It's consumed us, absolutely consumed us. You know, our husbands was coming home telling us how bad things were, you know, bills not being paid, you know, we're all struggling. We're all doing as many hours as we can in our own jobs, you know. Um, life's just totally different for us, which, you know, we just get on with it. But they've got very, very expensive overheads, very, very expensive vehicles. We just can't survive with what they're doing. This is why we've all put 24-7 into this, especially Artemis, who, who started the campaign, that this has become a 24-7. It's been relentless, hasn't it? It just hasn't stopped. So as well as running our day-to-day -day lives, we've got this, and we do it because we believe in the trade. Thank you. Uh, Amanda and Deborah there from Save Our Black Taxis. And